Okay, um, my name is Richard Benulli. I'm the CEO of a company based in Canada. Uh, we focus on research and consulting services for developing investment asset portfolios, essentially where to put money. And what we've taken is an approach based on the principles of the Austrian School of Economics. So I'd like to present to you some simple models that we've been putting together and also research that we're looking into for more, more types of approaches and indicators to help in the investment process, in the trading process. So when we look at uh, what's happening in the environment today, in terms of the investment environment and the economy, we see a lot of challenges in terms of negative interest rates, lots of quantitative easing programs, money printing, uh, in terms of also fiscal policies that are affecting economies and financial markets, different monetary policies. And so we, we, we looked at all these challenges and we came up with the Austrian School as the basis of what we could do towards developing asset model portfolios. So this, this is a depiction of, of our funneling process. So we look at the Austrian School and what we've done is synthesize what are the principles, what, what are the themes behind the Austrian School of Economics as the basis of investing and trading. You know, how can we apply those principles towards investing and trading? And what we did is we came up with 14 smart beta factors that we think affect the performance of the actual investments, either multi-asset or equity only. So these smart beta factors, we've actually divided into two sets. Uh, seven are quantitative smart beta factors and seven are qualitative smart beta factors. And what we did, so we, we looked at how the Austrian school emphasizes savings, investment, low debt, low leverage, manageable debt, cash flowing businesses, all, all of these type of, of principles that are valued by the Austrian school. And so we came up with these seven quantitative metrics that each one of which are actually positively correlated with stock market outperformance. So each one of these, so just taking one alone would actually provide stock market outperformance if you look at an equity. But what we did is we took seven. So looking at probability and statistics, the power of this is enormous because we're taking seven factors that are each positively correlated to stock market outperformance and we're making sure that the company complies with each of those seven. So the probability gets really high for overall stock market outperformance in terms of a, an equity portfolio on investing. And I'll go into trading a little bit later, but for now let's look at, at investing. So these ones also would be coupled with the qualitative smart beta factors, and that's, and that's these seven here. So uh, holding value, purchasing power, in terms of scarcity of capital, that, that is actually a, a very good uh, positive value in the Austrian tradition. We look at innovation, uh, uniqueness of, of, the, uh, of the actual business model, and alignment to economic trends, economic and millennial trends that are happening in the economy, and also a very strong emphasis on corporate social responsibility. So this is a very high focus that we have. We look at the ESG factors of a company, environmental social governance, and even recently we've put together an impact investing portfolio, which is quite unique. So our, our process is based on, on, on this. Uh, in terms of, we look at the whole universe of, of potential equities around the world. We then funnel those into an assessment of the seven quantitative factors I just mentioned, and then also funnel that into an assessment of the seven qualitative factors I mentioned to come up with a pool of suitable equities for a long-only equity portfolio. And so we call this the global equities pool. The same process we can apply specifically to jurisdictions, individual jurisdictions, individual market capitalizations, industry sectors, all, all types of, of approaches to what you want to look at. So we have different portfolios, a Brazil portfolio, emerging markets, Asia portfolio, 
also a global, overall global equities portfolio, and, and others. So we, we've applied this process to, to different jurisdictions. And so we also have a, a feedback mechanism as well. So it's an actively managed process. So we, we're continuously doing an ongoing assessment of the suitability of those businesses as investments in the portfolios. So it's, it's not a static process. Now, that was talk about the tra investing. We also look at trading. So we have a, a lead re research strategist, Ira Harris. He's been in the business for over 40 years in terms of trading multi-asset strategies. Comes on CNBC, if you watch CNBC, usually talks with Rick Santelli. And so he actually looks at the trading process in terms of uh, investments that, that make sense or tradings, trade, specific trades that make sense given imbalances or distortions in the economy, imbalances or distortions between central bank policies around the world, fiscal policies as well. And so this, this process is what we follow for that. So we look at the universe of multi-assets, whether they be yield curves or, or currencies, commodities, equities, around the world and we funnel that into uh, an assessment on, based on the imbalances and distortions that we see from an Austrian perspective. And that comes out in terms of trading suggestions that are, that are put out. So this is separate from our investing process, separate from the long only equity portfolio, but it encompasses an overall trading process that the output of which are actual specific trading suggestions. And at the same time, for both investing and trading, we have a very strong risk management process that we look at. So we're continuously assessing, monitoring for suitable investments, assessing whether we're on the right direction or not. So th this is also happening as well. So our actual portfolio is divided into three sections. The first part, as I mentioned, is this global equities pool of businesses, equities that make sense given our 14 smart beta factors as far as our qualification process. And then the trading opportunities as identified by Ira Harris. And then there's a third part as well is, uh, what do you do with cash if you're not trading or investing? So instead of holding physical cash uh, in terms of the government fiat currencies, you want to hold something that is preserving purchasing power, preserving a asset uh, wealth. And we see that in terms of physical metals, precious metals, as well as cryptocurrencies that are gold or silver backed. So we, we do see an opportunity for, for cryptocurrencies here, not the ones that are not backed by a government currency or a commodity, not the ones that are not in the financial system in terms of their being regulated within the financial and banking system. So we look at cryptocurrencies that are silver, gold backed, but that also comply with regulations in the financial system at the same time. Because we, we have concerns on cryptocurrencies that may be a crackdown by governments worldwide as they move towards government-based cryptocurrencies. So that's our suggestions on how to hold cash when you're in between investments and trading. And this is sort of a summary of what you get uh, on our services. As mentioned, we also have a strong focus on corporate social responsibility. So we look at a number of things. We, we do social responsible investment, SRI. What that means is we screen for positive screens and negative screens, you know, whether the businesses are in the business of weapons, tobacco as, as negative screens, and then we have positive screens as well. So we apply those screens uh, for each of those businesses that we look at. We also look at the ESG factors. So what, what, what are the businesses doing in terms of environmental, social, and governance? Those three and how they're rated through various rating mechanisms. We use Thompson factors to, to look at those rating mechanisms. Uh, we also go one step further uh, and we've just recently done this, is on impact investing. So this is where you're sort of throwing money at projects or initiatives where there's no expectation of return. 
And what we found is we went through all of our portfolios and we identified businesses that are not only doing well on our SRI and ESG screens, but also in the impact investing world. So what this means is either their business model is doing good social causes, social uh, issues, but also environmental issues, environmental causes. So we look at those and that could be either in their business model or in projects or initiatives that they may be conducting, or both. And what we identified is 39 businesses currently in, the, in our impact investing uh, portfolio that actually do all of this. So what we have now is 39 businesses that not only meet our qualification process for financial outperformance, but also can bring good to society uh, socially and environmentally. And, th and this is a strong trend that we see. Uh, the list here are some of the certifications we, we have in, in some of our holdings. Uh, we also are, are signatories to the United Nations Principles of Responsible Investment, uh, the UNPRI, we're, we're a signatory to that, and we follow the best practices based on that. And uh, this is actually uh, back testing on, on one of our portfolios in global equity. So we've actually gone back all the way to 2005 through the financial crisis just to illustrate how that, that, how that behaves in a, in a market downturn. So what's, what's important there is to look at the, the drawdown, various risk parameters. And, th and this is sort of general and representative of what we actually see on our portfolios, whatever jurisdiction they're in, whatever country, whatever industry segment, we, we're getting, we're seeing outperformance, outperformance relative to industry benchmarks, but also at lower risk. So if you look at the risk parameters, annualized volatility, beta, drawdown, sharp ratio, sortino ratio, it's generally at the same as industry benchmarks or lower. And that's what you want. You want outperformance at lower risk. So this, this is quite promising. And when we carry this, as I mentioned, to the impact uh, investing world, we're actually getting the benefits of this financial outperformance at the same time as benefiting society. So that's the ultimate in, in, a, in an offering for an impact investment strategy. This is our management team. As I mentioned, we have Ira Harris. He comes on CNBC a lot. He has over 40 years of trading. Uh, he was board of, of director at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and also is currently. And uh, Uli Korch actually has done consulting to central banks like the Swiss National Bank. Uh, Guy Haselman was head of rate strategy at, at Scotiabank. So we have all uh, very unique backgrounds, but uh, very similar in terms of an Austrian approach. And we'd like to make a pitch because we, we are looking to be the, the leading provider of, of doing investing and trading using the principles of the Austrian school. So that, that is our mission. Uh, we're, we're looking for uh, additional partners. If you'd like to, to be one, contact me. Uh, we, we, we have different business models. We work in terms of being an advisor, being a strategic partner, working with our team full-time basis. We have also intern programs. A lot of millennials work with us. And we also promote nonprofit uh, uh, discussion. So, so the way we see our role is in this, in this triangle here as the base of the Austrian School of Economics as the basis of everything. And then as, as many people uh, here uh, are applying that Austrian school towards governments or organizations, and we, we see ourselves in the upper two layers here. Uh, that third layer, investing and trading strategies, that's, that's our profit layer. And then we have the layer above it as the, the nonprofit layer, the public policy. So the third layer, investing and trading strategies, that we, that's what we do for a business. And as I mentioned, we emphasize ESG and CSR, manageable debt leverage, all towards uh, the development and offering of those strategies. And then above that, we have this public policy 
layer. So we're, we're quite excited about this because it's an integrated view towards, towards society in general. So, so we look at the benefits of the Austrian school towards bettering society and, uh, and working towards environmental sustainability at the same time creating jobs, innovation, entrepreneurialism. So we, we, you know, we see the emphasis of uh, countries and, and public policy of being able to have an emphasis on savings and investment versus a Keynesian way of, of borrowing and spending. And what we do is, on, on that regard, we have a podcast that we do uh, where we interview some of the best fund managers and economists worldwide. So we, we have a forum where we discuss this and, and have uh, you know, an outreach of that based on, on social media. We have YouTube, SoundCloud, we put it out via Twitter. We have a website, email distribution. So we're quite excited that our approach is, is very integrated. And this is how you can contact us, any questions. If you'd like to join our team, very welcome to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. And um, unfortunately, I think it's better if, if uh, we leave the questions now because we have a very short break and we sure. are a few minutes late on time. Okay. But if you have any questions to Richard, please come here and, and ask him in person. And thank you very much for your, for your uh, time and uh, enjoy the break. Thank you.